Hi folks, Todd with Survival Sherpa. Wanted to go over a mountain man tradition of starting fires with flint and steel. Things you need here. And let's talk just a little bit about the whole science behind this. Metal, this particular metal, iron, will spontaneously combust. It's a pyrophoric material. And it will spontaneously combust whenever smaller particles or smaller shavings of this metal comes off. So what we need today is a piece of steel and a piece of flint. Or anything that's harder than this particular metal that will shave small, small shavings off of this piece of metal here. Now, when we strike this... I'm going to set you up closer and we're going to see this. And when we strike this with our flint, the flint needs to have a good sharp edge on it so that it is scraping off material, the metal material, off of this steel. Now, the steel, flint and steel method of, of, of fire starting is completely different um, than ferro rod. Ferro rods are a mixture of different types of uh, metals. This is a this is a, a piece of steel with carbon content in it. It's hard. It's way harder than a ferro rod. A ferro rod, well, the, at least the ferro rods that I use. Ferro rods um, are going to, when you strike those ferro rods, you're going to see globs of, if you've got a softer ferro rod like I do, you're going to see globs of molten fire coming off and burning after you've done your strike. With a flint and steel, not so much. You're just getting sparks coming off of this piece of steel. Um, and the, and the, the, the flint or the chert or quartz, whatever you've got to use, is basically striking this piece of metal and, and causing small shavings of this steel to come off in the air. Now, what, why is that sparking? Oxidation occurs whenever metal Whenever iron hits air, it begins a process called oxidation. Oxidation creates heat. The friction from this also is creating heat, and by those shavings coming off, when they come in contact, the smaller surface area, area of those small shavings, when they come in contact with air or oxygen, they, come, they, they combust. It's spontaneous combustion. That's why you see sparks coming off of a sander when it's hitting high content, I mean high carbon steel. You'll see sand, uh, sparks flying off of that. Let me get you set up and we're going to demonstrate this for you into some char material that we have. So. Alright guys, I've got a little char tin here, screw lid, used to be a pellet box. Inside here I've got a couple of different pieces of char material. This is a bath cloth that was cut up and charred. Then I've got, got some 100% cotton material here. I I think that was a, I can't even remember. Um, anyway, it's charred material. Also, I've got some charred punk wood in here. Um, the thing about, the, di the main difference between flint and steel and the ferro rod is, you've got, when you, when you produce sparks off of here, striking here with a, with a piece of flint or chert, it is causing, it, it, it throws 800 degree sparks ferro rod on the other hand it's got magnesium content in it and when you strike here with a uh, with a striker or knife whatever um, you're going to see 3,000 degree sparks and actually depending on the ferro rod you're going to see globs of molten fire hitting wherever you you, you place your your sparks now that this ferro rod obviously is something that I carry everywhere in the woods. Um, it is. Uh, it came from the Pathfinder store from uh, from Dave Canterbury's store, and I've I've used it quite often, and it's still got plenty of uh, plenty of life in it. Now, so what I'd like to do is demonstrate both the flint and steel, and the ferro rod, and just let you see the difference. So. All we're going to do here is we're going to throw sparks off of this steel after we strike it here. We're going to 
as I said earlier, we're peeling this metal off in little bitty microscopic bits. And once it comes off, it is going to ignite once it hits oxygen. So, let's give it a try. There we go. I'm going to pull you over here in the shade so you can see this. So, so one spark and we've got ignition. We can transfer that to our tender bundle and blow that into a fire. So.